Okay. All right, good evening. Hey, um, I'm going to discuss uh, you know, the concept of uh, Bena Mitzorim, you know, the uh, Chazal see an illusion that uh, this is a, uh, that there's a stream of time from Shiva Sarbatamas through Tisha B'Av, even though, uh, as we learned tonight, uh, the rabbi taught us that the, the real Avelos of Dina the Gemara starts from Rosh Chodesh Av, you know, and just the Ashkenazim took on a Chumrah to uh, you know, start you know, some forms of Avelos from Shiva Sarbatamas, but that has a source already in the Medrash on the Pasuk in Echa, Kol Rotfer, Hisi Guha Ben Amitzarin, all those who have chased Amisro, unfortunately have been able to catch up to Amisro and nab them, Ben Amitzarim, between, you know, between the boundaries, you know, you know, caught between the gates, you know, the, between the walls, that Chazal Darshan this, that this is, you know, Shavasa Batamas and Tishabab. So it's already from, uh, you know, the Talmudic times that there's this concept, that there's a continuum, you know, from, uh, Shivas or Batamas through Tisha B'Av. I want to discuss that. You know, like you might think it's just a fast day and a fast day. But no, there's like a continuum uh, between the two, which I want to discuss the nature of that continuum. <clears throat> right? uh, but before we get into that, um, you know, there is a, a question we need to raise, what Chazal uh, tell us, call Ms. Abel al Yerushalayim, Zohar Baruch B'Sim Chasa, anyone who truly mourns for the Chorban of Yerushalayim, he will be the one that will merit to see it, uh, its joy, when it will be rebuilt, Bimhera Amenu. And we have to understand why that is, what is the connection that because a person uh, mourns it, he will merit to see its rebuilding. Uh, another thing, uh, there is a... Um, there's a, uh, a, a, a legend that uh, people mistakenly think is in the Sefer Torah Sa'ola of the Ramah, but it's nowhere there. But it's a story that all of Klai Yisrael tell, that, uh, that Yermio Anavi and the philosopher Plato met each other. Now, the dates do actually work out. You know, it's, it's, it's historically plausible. Right, that, uh, and the, the philosopher Plato, we ask Yermio Anavi, you know, saw that you know, Yermio Anavi is the Navi that wrote Megillas Echa wrote the Book of Lamentation. He was, you know, you know foretold the Chorban Abayas and very much was in deep mourning over Chorban Abayas. And uh, Plato asked him, you know, you know it, wise people just get on with their lives. You know, what happened, happened, and you, you move on. Right? It's not mechok ha It is not the way of wisdom, you know, to cry over something that happened already. You move on. And uh, as the story goes, you know, uh, Yermi Navi told them, listen, you, you just won't understand. And as the story goes, they, then they changed the topic and they discussed philosophical ideas, metaphysics, and Yermio Novi being a Novi, which also means he's a very big Kabbalist. He had a lot to say about, you know, the areas of inquiry that philosophy deals with. So after Plato said, look, I proved myself. You see, I'm a, what we call a bar hochi. You know, I'm a big intellectual, no less than you. Now explain to me what's with this uh, temple that you're mourning that you wouldn't understand. So then a little bit, you know, the mystery, obviously something very deep, you tell a guy like Plato, right, you wouldn't understand. It's something that, uh, you know, we have to try to understand, you know, what it's all about. <clears throat> There's a very interesting uh, trend that we find in uh, the, uh, the Agathas that I'm sure everyone learns again every year in Seches Gittin, talking about the, uh, the stories, you know, the horrible uh, tragedies that happened, Chorben Abayas, and there's, there's a magic number of three that comes up over and over again. The sugya opens up, uh, you know, talking about that there were three major, Akamsa Bar Kamsa Harva Yushalayim, right, because the story of Kamsa Bar Kamsa Yushalayim, you know, Atargol of Tarnagolta Har of Tur Malka, Ashaka de Rizbak Harva Betar. Right, so even though, like, the whole Eretz Yisrael and all the towns got wiped up, they focus on Yushalayim, Tur Malka, and Betar. And then when we, you know, we go, as the, as the Agathas go on, it talks about that when uh, Aspasianus, Vespasian, uh, you know, came you know, to take down Yushalayim, he the siege was for three years. Right? And it talks about that in the town, there were three very rich men that held that they, they could you know, uh, actually theoretically uh, give enough uh, resources that they could hold out for 21 years, right? 
right? That's uh, Nachdim Ben Gurion, Kalba Savua, and Ben Tzitzis Ben Hakasis Ben Tzitzis or Tzitzis Ben Hakasis, right? These are the three rich men, right? Again, you know, the idea of three, you know, comes up over and over again, and the Maral points out that you know the Ben Amitzarim is three weeks long. Right? The Mara already uh, points this out, and, you know, and three weeks long, and which is 21 days. Right? And it's like parallel to that these three Ashirim were able to support Yerushalayim for 21 years. That's three weeks, 21 days. The three Ashirim between them could have supported you know, Am Yisrael, you know, in, you know, in uh, Yerushalayim for 21 years, that as it were, you know, the three weeks, which are 21 days, is like a micro of the idea of Chorban, which has a, a threeness, you know, both in Klali, generally speaking, and Baderech Prat goes from three to 21, you know, seven times three. <clears throat> right, to, uh, to understand, you know, the, a little bit about this and, uh, and why it's also this time of year. <clears throat> Uh, the um, you know, the the concept of three. Where we find the concept of three, you know, there's something that we say at the end of a uh, Leila Seder, right? And and it's it's really no nursery rhyme. It's really something very deep. If anyone sees ever learned Pirushim on the Echad Miodea, it's a really it's a it's a very philosophical poem going into number theory, not so much you know quantity. But numbers are ideas, and every number has an ideological significance. And, I, and I'm not going to go through the whole Echad Miodea now, but my Rebbe, Moshe Shapiro, Zechar Tzayk V'Kosh gave us four hour-long shiurim, right? Four shiurim on Echad Miodea back in uh, 1995. Right? That's how deep it is. Right? right? <laughs> the, the uh, you know, these are... Uh, you know, numbers, I mean, everyone's uh, studied Pythagoras. You know, numbers are concepts. You know, uh, this is a very big idea in Kabbalah. So the Echad Miodea says, Shlosha Miodea, Shlosha Niodea, Shlosha Avos. Right, the concept of three is the three of us. So to understand a little bit what it is, because we definitely see the threeness over here, as we showed in the whole story of the Chorbin. Right? So, uh, as, as the Svarim explained, right, what does the concept of three represent? That, uh, and, you know, the idea of three. Three, the idea, not the quantity. The idea of three, right, that, and, 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 and when you understand that's the idea, you realize that the greatest representation of it on earth, the greatest metaphor for the Musik of three, is that we have three of us. What's the concept of three? Well, yeah. Very good, very good. That's part of it. That you know, in three, it's something solid, like a chazaka, like your cheskas gimel shonim in real estate law. Right? By metalton, your chazaka is holding it, but by karka, that's too big to hold. It holds you, so you have a yeah, so you can't hold the karka, right? So you know, the real estate, you establish a chazaka by having been on the land for three years, right? Correct. And that's and there's the famous pasuk they said achutam mishulash lo bihir yinatek, but there's something more basic why it should be that way. That that three is a chazaka like a possession and chazaka like a strong rope. Achutam mishulash lo bihir yinatek. What does three represent? Right. Yeah, very good. Right. Okay. Okay. All the three somehow. Yeah. But but let, let, let right. Let, Stability. Right. Okay. So, but why? But why? But why? 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 Because what? We are living in a three-dimensional world. Okay. Yes, that's right. That's correct. Hegel, that Hegel, right? But right, it, it's he's right. It happens. But you know, but the Maral and ours, they lived before Hegel, right? <laughs> the, uh, that's right. You know, he was quoting from Hegel: thesis, antithesis, synthesis. Right? I mean, there, there's the there's the two extremes, the the, the two poles that oppose each other. Right? And uh, if you just have those two, then things would just splinter. But then there's the third, that's machria, that, that holds the two together. That's the synthesis of the two, and will weigh out the situation when it's more time for this pole, when it's more time for that pole. Right? So it means, so the idea of the three is you have the two extremes, and you have the middle, 
that holds it together, you know, it's a, the synthesis, and, and will decide when the situation is appropriate. Right? You don't have a middle until you have three. You want to think about that for a second? It's, it's obvious. You don't, you don't have a middle until you have three. What? No, no, because that, that's the whole concept of third. It's, it's the, the third is the middle. Right, so you just have in, right, in, a, you know, in, in number, right, right, no, until you have the, the, the concept of three, you know, numbers being concepts, that's, uh, that's when you have, right, the uh, a, you know, right side, left side, right, the two extremes, and the middle. Right, and, and, and that's what holds everything together. Right, uh, the middle holds things together and decides when this is appropriate and when, you know. And, uh, you know, this, this is also to, um, <clears throat> so before I get back to it, but remind me to reference the Rambam and Hilchus Des in case I forget, but it's more appropriate to first get back to the Shlosha Avos, right, the, uh, our, our three forefathers, right, that Amisro has three fathers, right, the American people just have George Washington, right, Right? Why do we need three fathers? It's hard enough with one. Right? 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 Shlosha of us. Shlosha be that. Right? Shlosha of us. Right? Mashri, you know, one founding father is not enough. Right? And, uh, and, uh, and it's mamish, these three. We know the halacha is. Ain karin la of us, elo la shlosha. There are only three that have the title of us, Aram Yitzhak and Yaakov. Not more, not less. Right? And shlosha be Shlosha of us. Right? We need three fathers. One father wasn't enough, two fathers wasn't enough, and we don't need more than three. Right? So it's like this, right? because Am Yisrael, you know, is, is, you know, which is supposed to be the nation that has all good midas, everything you could ever want, right? Anything that's, you know, all positive traits. You know, positive traits, you know, are, there's the positive traits of chesed, kindness, right? 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 But, you know, just kindness, right? Uh, we can't have a travel ban if there's just kindness, right? We can't, you know, you know, you know it'll be, you know, right? We can't, you know, we can't have any law and order if only kindness. So, you, right, you have on the opposite extreme, gvura or din, right? All right, but, you know, there's, uh, cause there's a time and place for either of them, right? But then there's a, uh, but then the situation is complicated. Sometimes there's a, a little bit of this and a little bit of that. Like, you know, you deserve a fine, right? But you know what? Because of, you know, you were under pressure, this and that, you get a reduction, right? And, and that's justice, right? Because sometimes it's, it's, uh, the situation is complex. And that's what mercy is. The idea of mercy, rachamin, is actually the synthesis between chesed and din. Right, that's the mercy is always talking about. There's din, like I throw myself at the mercy of the court, and the din is being tempered, you know, being tempered somewhat. And, and the rachamim is like what weighs out the situation because, you know, you know, you know, the you know, also, you know, it's also a rachim on Mishayim Bodas, right? There's sometimes where rachamim is not called for, and rachamim itself understands the one in the middle understands when it's time for chesed, when it's time for din, and when it's time to synthesize. So the role of the one in the middle is to hold the whole thing together. And it will decide. It will be what's called the mekubom, called the middle, the machria, the one that, you know, the swing vote, that will decide, you know, whether we're going to synthesize or we're going to go, it's time for chesed or it's time for din. Right? <clears throat> and, and, and this is the, the, the midos of our three avos. Abraham, chesed, Yitzchak, Din, right? And Yaakov, Tiferes, Rachamin, right? <clears throat> and that's what, uh, to Am Yisrael, to be uh, a complete people with every good mida, that, you know, there's all the good midas that are in the category of chasadim, and there are all the good midas that are in the category of Din and Gvura, and then there's all the good midas that uh, belong to the category of what's in the middle, and that's why we needed three of us. Otherwise, we would be lacking as a people because we are supposed to be the people that uh, have every mida nechayna, every good mida imaginable. That all the good midas and how the midas could also fit together. Fit together. That's such that's an amazing thing. Not just to have all of the good midas, but that the midas also fit together in a holistic, in a balanced system. Right? That, that, you know, for that, we needed three of us. And then Am Yisrael could start get going as a nation, that the next generation after Yaakov start the Shvatim, start the tribes, you know, because our foundations have been laid, and now we start becoming a nation, you know, first with the 12 tribes. 
And this is you know, what Chazal tell us, that is, you know, there's Gimel Simonim Bumazu, there's three signs for this nation. They are Rachmanim, Baishanim, Gomle Chasarim. It's going in reverse order, bottom up, Rachmanim, Yaakov Avinu, Baishanim, right? You know, Busha, right? You're embarrassed if you're caught doing something wrong, right? Busha is actually respect for the law, right? That's not just, you know, fear of punishment, but a person who has the recognition that he's in the wrong, so he's, you know, he's, that, that's the Mida of Yira, Yira Tashem. As the Pusk says, Ba'avur, la'asoschem ba'okim, u'va'avur ye'tiyeh yeroso al pnechem, le'bilti techeto, you should have your fear and never sin, says Rashi, zuha busha. You should be embarrassed to sin, and that's called to have Yira Tashem, and that's the Mida of Gvura, that's Ba'ishonim, and then, Gom le'chasodim, right, Avram Avin. Right? And that's also the Shlosha Amudim, our Shlosha Dvarim Olam Omeid, ala Torah, Yaakov Avinu, because the Torah includes in it Chesed and Din. It's full of halachas and tells us to do things like Mochem Esamot, but also tells us to do Gnascham, so Torah includes everything. Torah, Avoda, Avoda is Yitzhak Avinu, you know, he was willing to himself, you know, willing to be a sacrifice, right? Avoda, divine service, right? Ug Milus Chasodim, Avram Avinu, right? And, uh, right, and that's, you know, and this, uh, you know, uh, this also is parallel, Al Shoshim Ba'olam Kayam, Hadin, right, Yitzhak Avinu, Emes, Yaakov Avinu, Titan Emes Li Yaakov, because Emes, Aleph Mem Tav, the beginning, you know, is the synthesis that is everything, Vashalom, and peace, that's Avram Avinu, parallel to Avram Avinu. Right? <coughs> so this is the Indian. Right, that Amisol has this threeness to it, the Shlosha of us, and Amisol has all the good midas and, and a system of holding things together. And that's really you know, why you know, the holding things together, the center is really you know, what made the capstone on the of us. That's why Yaakov Vino, even though he is the Bechir Sheba of us, Chazal tells us in a few places, he was the high, on the highest level of all the three of us. Why wasn't he born first? He was born last. Right? And now that, there's an interesting medrash in Parshas told us. The Pasuk says in Navi, Neum Elokei Yaakov Asher Pada Es Avram. The words of the God of Yaakov, who saved Avram. The Navi is referencing how Avram was saved from the Kivshon Esh, from the furnace of fire. So the medrash says you could read the Pasuk like this. Cut the Pasuk up, it's, leave out Neum Elokei, Yaakov Asher Pada Es Avram. Yaakov saved Avram, says the medrash, that at the time that Ravina was thrown into the Kivshana Eish for his beliefs, even though that was a tremendous uh, act of Messiah Snavish, he still didn't deserve to be saved. Right? He would have had the merit of dying al Kiddush Hashem, the merit of martyrdom. It's a big merit. Why was he saved? Only because he was destined to beget Yaakov Avinu. So Yaakov put us Avram. Yaakov saved Avram from the Kivshana Eish uh, because he foresaw that he's destined to have Yitzhak, who is supposed to have Yaakov. Yaakov has to be born last because that's his function of being the synthesizer. So, of course, that's the highest level, to be inclusive of both, but you're not the synthesizer until you have the first two poles first. So Yaakov is the tachlis, the end goal, and the end goal has to come last because he's the synthesizer that holds together the two poles. You have to first have the two poles, and then you can have the third. That's the synthesizer and holds the whole thing together. And then Amiso becomes the Chut HaMeshulosh, Asher Lo Bimher Yinotek, right, the triple string, you know, the, the three-stranded rope, right, that does not easily break. <coughs> right? And, you know, parallel to that, we have three Regalim, right? Three, you know, three times we go to the base of Mikdash and the Sfarim say, they're also parallel like Regalim legs. Right? Just like al shloshet dvarim olam omed. So it's not just that we use our feet to go up to hara bias, but these three holidays are parallel to the tripod that Am Yisrael stands on. Right? That uh, Pesach was all chesed. Right? Uh, Koshu took us out out of kindness. Right? Because we were memtes shari tuma, and that's why it's not a coincidence. Which Av got the prophecy of Yitzias Mitzrayim, Avram Avinu by Bris ben Absorim. Right, so Pesach belongs to Avram, right? Shavuos belongs to, you know, it's parallel to Yitzchak, because that's when we got the Torah, and that's when we earned our existence, right? Now we could keep the law, it's all we got the law, 
and we could uphold the law, and we could earn our existence, we, and we could have a kiyum bedin, and we could deserve our existence. We could earn, that's all din, that's, you know, by law. Right? And sukkas, right? When, when it, everything comes together at the end of the three regalim, that's Yaakov Vino, and that's alluded to, V'yaakov nosa sukosa v'even lo bayas v'mekne osa sukos, is an allusion to sukkas, right? And, you know, and it just goes on and on. Right? You know, one of the functions of building a Beis HaMikdash, uh, the Rambam writes in Hilchus Beis HaBchira, you know, and in the Sefer HaMitzvah, is that aside from place to do the Kabbalah, but it's a makom of Aliyah Lorego. He writes in the very description of the mitzvah. We have to make a, that focal point that Am Yisrael all comes together at three times a year. So Beis Mitzvah, as a part of its function, was it is where that tripod is, where they are the three legs, you know, the three regalim, that the tripod comes together by the Beis HaMikdash. <coughs> so I just want to say one thing before I forget. Now you can understand the Rambam. In Hilchos Des, the Rambam's famous shita of you know what's called a good mida, right? Down the middle, right, 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 down the middle, right. So it, it's not like people think that you know the Rambam said like you know, you know don't be too fried, don't be too from. That's it's not it's not what it means. It's uh, it means you know when you're when you're down the middle, that means you're in control. You should be down the middle because when you're down the middle. You are balanced, and you have the benefit of both sides, and you'll decide. When you're in the middle, you're in control, and you can decide. So generally speaking, the middle is the way to be because it, you know, it's a synthesis of the two, but also from that position, you could easily decide when it's time to bend to the chesed or bend to the din because you know, the Torah sometimes demands from us chasadim and sometimes demands dinim. You're not going to be able to, on a dime, you know, Bend if you're not conditioned that you're down the middle. There, you're down the middle. You can always do exactly whatever the Torah demands from you, whether it's chasodim or dinim. Right? And so that's why the uh, you know the uh, the Rambam saw you know an allusion to a shita on the famous medrash, on the famous uh, mission of us. I meant to say ezu derech yeshora shiav b'adam koshu tiferes lo sev tiferes lo min adam. Right. So anyone who's a little bit of you know, a little bit kabbalistic or Hasidically inclined. That that derech that a person should choose, which Ram says in that mission is the derech haim tzoyis. The middle way is tiferes lo sev and tiferes mina adam. Who has the meat of tiferes? Yaakov Avinu, right, right. The middle path because the middle path is the synthesis. That's why it's the right way because it, it's you know it's it's the synthesis, and it, from that position it's easy to when the situation demands easy go easily go to the right. Or easily go to left. The fee, whatever mitzvah comes your way, some mitzvahs are chasadim, some mitzvahs demand gvura. Right? <clears throat> and that's how we, derach yeshara. Right? So, Sefer Bresh is called Sefer Yesharim. Al Shem Avram Yitzhak V Yaakov, Shenikru Yesharim. Right? But it's because between the three of them together that they're called Yashar, because Yaakov you know, comes and aligns the two, holds the two together. And that's where the name, our two names, I heard from my Rabbi Moshe Shapiro. Right? We, Amisol as a nation has two names, Yisrael and Yeshurun. Right? And the two names have the same Shoresh, Yashar. Right? You know, but Yashar, straight, is you know, uh, you know, that uh, you're not going to deviate to the right, you're not going to deviate to the left, is because you have the, the one in the middle holding it together. So that's why Yaakov you know, holds it. He, per se, got the name Yisrael, which became the name of the whole nation. We're balanced, we're straight, we could stay aligned with the goal, we're not going to bend to the right, to the left. We'll have the benefit of the right and to the left, right? But we're not going to bend to the right and left. So now you can understand, you know, God forbid, you know, the terrible thing that we lost, right? With Chorben Abais, our whole tripod was undone. And that's, and that's what the Gemara is describing, the threeness, right? As Maral discusses this consistently in his Pirusha Agodas and Sefer HaNetzach, Right, the threeness of what was Yerushalayim, <coughs> Tur Malka, right, and Betar. Right, the Maral sets it up, you know, as Yerushalayim, Betar, and Tur Malka. Yerushalayim being the center. This is famous in Chazal that Eretz Yisrael is the center of the globe. Yerushalayim, the center of Eretz Yisrael, and the base of Mikdash is the center, right, of of Yerushalayim, center. The Kodesh HaKadoshim is the center of there, and that and Chazal 
are always Maramas, and Nefshachayim points out, Yechaven Libo, Keneged Beis Kodshia Kodashim, your heart, that as the Beis Kodshia Kodashim is like the heart of the universe. So you should always have your heart, your personal heart, your center, should be aligned with the Kodesh HaKadoshim. Right? Yerushalayim, which was, uh, which is uh, the base, which is called Beis Eloke Yaakov. Right? The third base, which will be called the Beis Eloke Yaakov. You know, not like Avram that called it a mountain, Avram Shkorah, not like Yitzhak that called it a soda. Right? But like Yaakov Shkorah, Bay Shnemar, Ein Zekim, Beis Elokim, so Yerushalayim, which is the center, that's connected Yaakov Avinu, right? What's Beitar all about? Beitar was all about strength, right? That, you know, that what was the story that happened in Beitar that caused the, precipitated the Horbin? Is that they had a minog in Beitar that at the time when, a, uh, when, when kids are born, they used to plant a rosin, plant cedar trees, right? And then on the day of the wedding, they would cut down those trees and make a big, big, you know, palace out of it. Yeah, representing that they should have a strong, strong kium, and that's like your right arm, which is your stronger arm, right? It's your stronger arm. So Beitar was Keneged, the right side, Avram Avinu, right? Tur Malka, right? Tur Malka, which means in, uh, which Aramaic means Haramelech, the, you know, the um, mountain of the king, right? So what, was the, what were they about? You know, they were about that they were, it was massive. The Gemara says like an astronomical number of people lived there and the Amora went to visit and said, man, it wouldn't even hold 600,000 reeds. We thought it was like, you know, like Kiyotse Mitzrayim. And it was because, sadly, Eretz Yisrael lost space by Chorben Abayas. That's why it's called Eretz Atzvi, like the land of the deer, right? That the deer, if you'd have skin a deer alive, you'd never be able to put it back together. Right? You can't get the skin around it's like a miracle that the skin fits around the deer. So also Eretz Yisrael is amazing. It's really bigger on the inside and the outside, but that's only when the Jewish people occupy Eretz Yisrael. There's a spatial distortion that's actually bigger than how much it actually measures. Amazing thing. And they had like an amazing amount of people there. What was their custom, which you know, worked against them? They had that by uh, a chasana, they had a chicken and a rooster walking from the chasana and kala, that the chasana, they should breed and be a lot. Like, you know, how, you know, chickens breed much. Right? And they, uh, you know, and then, you know, the Romans took the chickens from one particular wedding and the Jews, you know, put up a fuss and that's what caused, you know, you know, a response from the authorities and they destroyed the town. But it's about the idea of plenty. Plenty. Much. That's why it's called Har HaMelech. Barov Am Hadras Melch. The more, the more glorious king. It's about abundance. So says the Maral, abundance starts from the second. One is not in abundance. Avram Vinu was the first. We, you know, Avram started multiplying when he had Yitzchak. And in Tunis is when this idea of that begin to multiply. And the Maral says something even deeper. You know, in Chesed, which was Avram Vinu's attribute, right? In, in chesed, there's no distinctions. Everyone gets equally in pure chesed. In din, there all of a sudden becomes complex. They become multitude of distinctions. He deserves this. He deserves less. He deserves more. Right? And, you know, and, and whenever you're dealing in din, there's automatically a multiplicity. You are either chayef or potter. It's either tame or tahar. It's either mutter or asr. So in din, there's ribui. Right? Because in Din, you're dealing with multiple possibilities. So that's the law is guilty or innocent, right? Obligated, not obligated. Right? That's the way it works, right? So the uh, so Tur Mak was Keneged Yitzhak Avinu, Keneged the Ribui. Right? So as it were, Yushalayim is like the center. Betar, conceptually, the right hand, Avram Vinu. Tur Malka, the left hand. Right? And, and, and Chazal you know, took these three cities as a metaphor to say that we lost... Right, you know, these three things you know, were represented as were categories of types of midas that we lost. Right? So now it wasn't a coincidence that you know Vespasian right went around. It took him how long to conquer Yushalayim? Three years. Three years. Right? An amazing thing, right? Because he had to conquer our threeness, and that's why the siege had to take three years. You know, uh, that's why it had to be. Uh, that long, right? The idea being that either by the end of three years he would have conquered us, or if we would have persevered past that point, he would have to go home, one or the other. 
Because the threeness was, he's coming up against our threeness. The koch of Avram, Yitzhak, and Yaakov. The koch, the koch of our three midas. The koch of our three legs. So it was either, you know, to win or to be defeated. And that, the challenge was three years long. Going up, you know, every year representing another one of our midas. He either had, it couldn't, the siege couldn't have been less than three years. And if it would have taken longer than three years, he would have had to go home. He would have given up. <coughs> Right? And that's what it means also. There were three right? <coughs> there were three rich men in that town. An amazing thing. Nakdimon Ben Gurion. Right? Now, why was he so Gemara starts darshning why they were called what they were called. Nakdimon Ben Gurion Nakdalo Hama. He had a miracle that the sun stood still for him. You know, a story that uh, you know for the Ole Regolim, you know, for those who are coming up to Yushalayim, right, he needed he needed wells, you know, to you know give them water. And his wells were dry, right? So he asked from some Roman, you know, you know, you, you're a rich guy, you own wells all the way along the way to Shalim. Let me use, let the other Rogom use the water from your wells, right? So he said, listen, uh, when are you going to pay me back? Right? Well, by such and such a date, I guarantee you, my God, you know, bring the rain and your wells will be full. And if not, I'll give you all my wealth, everything. Right? And he was a very wealthy guy. So the, uh, as the story goes, you know, it was like the very last day was a drought, right? Like there was nowhere near the amount of water to fill the wells, you know, that, you know, the water that was depleted by the Oli Rogom. And the Roman guy, he laughed, you know, he laughed. And it's, like, it's like sunset is, you know, now, right? I'm going to the Merachats. I'm going to go, I'm, I'm going to take a bath in honor, you know, in honor of the occasion. I guess he didn't bathe that often otherwise, right? He's going to the Merachats, right? And, uh, you know, and... Uh, you know, and prepare all your wealth, right? So then after that, you know, uh, it started raining and raining and raining, and in a very short amount of time, all the water got filled up. Right? So, but, you know, Roman comes out, but it's too late. And the clouds parted, and the sun was still standing, even though by the fias, by the clock, the sun shouldn't have been in the sky. Not the Lohama. That's why he got his name. <clears throat> and then there was Kalba Savua. And why was he called Kalba Savua? Right? So this Dr. Megur was going to give firewood. Right? Keep this in mind. Now, Kalba Savua, right? he was called Kalba Savua, that a person goes into Mroiv Kekelv, hungry like a dog, you come out Savea, right? you come out full. And he was going to give Chiti Vesari. He was going to give you know, uh, wheat and barley. Right? And then the other guy, Tzitzis Ben Akasas, right? that guy, Right, that you know, he was uh, so rich that you know, he, uh, that you know, they put out the uh, you know cloth so his tzitzis shouldn't drag on the floor. Or another lotion is that he used to say it amongst the Romans, right? Uh, so he was going to give salt, wine, and oil, right? And between them, these three guys, they were able to be mefarnes eretz yisrael in Yerushalayim for 21 years. Says the Maral. So that means three times seven. Now, seven, the word sheva, also, if you say it, you know, as a sin, as opposed to a shin, it's savea, full. Representing that these three guys were full, you know, they had, they had their midah, right, to fullness, fullness. That you have the three, but full, savea, so that's how you get to 21, where you have that, you have each one of the three attributes to its fullness, right? So going through them again. So Nakdim Ben Gurion, right? He had a miracle happen to him. He had a miracle happen to him, which means that shows that God is with him. He is parallel to Yushalayim per se. God, you know, that's where God dwells, and that's parallel to Yaakov Avinu. That we know that Yaakov, you know, Karol Yaakov El, right? Yaakov yeah, even called Yaakov a deity, as it were, because of the you know, Yaakov Chakuka Kisei Yaakov. He had a miracle happen to him. God is with him, right? And, and, that's, what, and that's represented by firewood. Firewood is, is mercy, right? Why is it firewood mercy? Right? God could easily tell you, eat it raw, man. Eat it raw, <laughs> right? Right? <laughs> Be thankful I gave you food, right? right? But again, but then again, look, God, you know, follow through on the favor. You know, he gave me food. Like, make it taste good, right? So it's like an element of like you could say to God, well, look, if you gave me food already, follow through to the end. So on the one hand, God gave you food already. It doesn't have to be cooked. Eat it raw. Right? But on the other hand, you have a taina. Listen, you know, uh, if you're giving food already, you know, go the whole way and make it tasty. And that's why, 
you know, firewood is rachamim, right? Prowl to Yaakov Avinu, right? <coughs> you know, the, uh, <coughs> right, you know, the kalba savua. Anyone who's hungry comes out, you know, even hungry like a dog, comes out satiated, right? Hazar Sam Kulo Bituvo, Bechain, Bechesed, Uvarachamim, right? Akarjo who gives the world, you know, sustenance, Bechesed. So, Trez Chesed, Akarjo who gives us sustenance, right? So, that's Kabasavos, Keneged Chesed, Keneged Avram Avinu, right? As you were, he's a person that's parallel to the idea of Betar, you know, what the Betar represented as a city, right? <coughs> and and Kabasavua, he gives what? He gives, I mean, Kabasavua, since it's been a Kassas, right? Chashvagai, right? And of course, you know, Chashivas uh, means he's like a king, sort of, you know, which, um, you know, king, his word is law, right? Chashivas uh, is, uh, you know, without getting into why, it shows a status, status means authority, authority is din. He gives, right, wine, oil, and, and uh, salt. What's a common denominator? They give taste. Right? It says tomorrow a brilliant thing. That's din. When, when the Gemara says a din, what does the Gemara say? It states a dry law. So the Gemara asks afterwards, my timer. My timer. Right? What's the reason? Right? Because well, you know, it doesn't understand the reason. It makes a gishmak, like taste. Right? My time, what's the reason? You know, in din, you find tam. Chesed doesn't need a reason. You don't need a reason to bestow kindness. But why the law is the law? You have to give reasoning. And that's called to give Tom. And that's what he gives. He gives Tom and he's gonna get din. Right? So it comes out that the the, the the you know the horrendous you know setback of Corbin Abias is that we were deprived of our tripod. And that's why so now we'll get to another principle, and with this we'll uh, bring it all home. A very big principle in our philosophy. Uh, uh Yisod laid down by the Sefer Yitzira. It is the basis of the Sefer Yitzira. You know, is that there's that the, the world has three, you know, the cosmos, existence, has three parallels. Olam, Shana, Nefesh. Right? There's the, the there's place in the world, there's the time of the year, and then there's a person. Maroshiva, Zechron Liv Rocher, Yaakov Warm, because your time was yesterday, used to just give a marshal, even though this example is not in the Sefer Yitzira, but just a marshal, get this into the head, right? Kohen Gadol, Kodesh HaKadoshim, Yom Kippur. You know, those three line up, you know, Davka, you know, that guy, Davka, could be in that place on that day. And vice versa, you know, only on that day, he can walk in there, right? That place can only go in, you know, yeah, by this guy on that time, right? These are like, you know, the parallels that there are. Now, uh, a, a more basic idea that's set all over Chumash, you know, is that, you know, Throughout Chumash, we have a hekesh between Shabbos and the Beis HaMikdash. And Shabbos said to Shmo, Mikdashi Tiro Ani Hashem. Right? Or, you know, in Parshas Kisisa, the whole Melech HaSamishkan is Hukash to Shmira Shabbos. The Pesukim are all over. Right? And the truth is, right, that the, these are, you know, the Am Yisrael and the Shabbos, right, and the Beis HaMikdash are three parallels. We're the holy nation. Shabbos is the holy day. The base of interest is the holy place. Right? So now, with that in mind, we show that, you know, that there's a parallel between time and space, and how, uh, what, what relativity has to say about that. Space-time, you know, we'll leave that to the physicists in the crowd, whether the Sefer Tzira has divined the idea of space-time ahead of its time. Right? But what the Sefer Tzira talks about is that there's, there's man and, 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 you know, and the Zman, and the Mokom, Mokom Zman, and the nefesh all work in parallels, and that's the basis of the whole Sefer Yitzira, going month by month by month, the power of the month, you know, what it is in the person, and what it is in the world. What is it called? Which mazel it is. <clears throat> that's the, so now, something to observe about, you know, the, our fast days. The Maral points out in Sefer Netzach. You know, the, the fast days that are, that are, that are connected Chorben, Chorben, right? Are in two times a year. Well, we have Shivas or Batamus, and we have Tisha B'av in the summer. Now, what's the other one that's somewhat, you know, in, in remembrance of, you know, our setbacks, Asur Batavis, and that's in the depth of the winter. So, anyone who knows from the Gemara, there's Tkufas Tamus, which is the hottest time of the year, Tkufas Teves, 
coldest time of the year. And, and, and the Maral is so certain of this that he says, therefore, Tzom Gedalia is not a Zechel Chorben. It's Misas Tzadikim. It's, it's, well, it's, it's not Siluk Tzadikim. It's nothing to do with Chorben. He's so sure of that. Because he points out that, you know, there's so now our, our, our the, the, and of course, Tanis Esther is not a Zechel Chorben. Tanis Esther, which is, or it comes out in Adar after Kufas Tevis, you know, as we're approaching spring, that's just Zechel for the Muhammad. So the, the so the Tanesim that are Keneged Chorbonus are Shavasa Batamus and Tishabab in the depth of the summer and heat of summer and Asar Tevis in the cold of the winter. Right? And whereas our good times, our good times are Tishrei, Sukkis, Nisan, right, Pesach, and Shavuos is still part of Tkufas Nisan. All right, Shavuos is still during what uh, what Chazal would call Tkufas Nisan. Where the weather is balanced, so it says the Maran amazing vort, right, which crosses over to what we said, balance. You know, on Nisan and Tishrei, the days are exactly, you know, the light time and the and the dark time are twelve hours each. Days are perfectly balanced. Days are perfectly balanced, right? And we said Shavuos is close enough to Nisan, like we said, right? <clears throat> right? Days are perfectly balanced, and those are our good times, right? Those are the the uh, the uh, the Yomim Tovim, right? The Shal Shuragam come out mostly where the weather is dead center, right? Keneged Tiferes, Keneged, you know, the center that, that has, it's the synthesis of all poles, and says the Maral amazing thing, you want to break something, where won't you try to break it if you want to break something? You don't break it in the center, that's its strongest point. You break it at the edges. The edges are what's weak, right? At the edge, you can break it. In the middle, you can't break it. So it says the Maharal, our strong times is like the center of the year. When, you know, these, these Chodashim, that the weather and the alignment of dark period and light period are centered and balanced. Right? In the center and in the balance is strength. Right? And that's where, you know, there's still Yamim Tovim, Afilu Bizman Azeh. Right? That's where our strength is. Weakness, right, is on the edges. Right? So, Shivasa Batamuz and Tishabab is on the edge of heat, summer. Asar Batavis on the edge of coldness. That's, they're on the extremes. The extremes are vulnerable. The extremes are dangerous. Being an extremist is dangerous. Right? That's you know, the gift of Amisos is that we're Yashar, we're straight, we're balanced. So our strong months are the balanced months. Our weak months are the months of the extreme. And, and in the depth of it, Right? The, uh, the summer month is extreme chesed. Right? If light is kindness and darkness is din. Right? You know, the days are just too long in the summer. Right? And the nights are just too long in the winter. And it's connected to the extremes of too much chesed and too much din, which everyone knows is yishmo, too much chesed. Right? As, whatever, without getting into why that is. And esav, too much din, he's a rotseach. Right, he, uh, he's a he's a murderer. Right? Too much has to do much kavura, and that's the uh, and that's the summer, and that's the winter. That's uh, those are the extremes where we're vulnerable. But here's the thing about the um, no, the thing about the center is that it's strong, and it's balanced, and it's boring. Right, <laughs> right. It's no fun. No fun. Uh, I mean, I guess. Uh, you guys don't know what fun is. Okay, it's fine. So, <laughs> that's obvious. But the, but I'm almost done, right? The, uh, but you know, you know, right? <laughs> but the, uh, yeah. The, so this, this, this is the amkus that you know we we uh, we, we are not we don't yet have Kalim, right? To receive the extremes. The extremes are off the scale and off our ability to handle, and and that's an amazing thing. Right, that you know. That's why the Navi says all these Tanesim that are zechel korban are going to become yemei sasam v'simcha. They're going to be converted into joy. See, we don't have the capacity to handle the extremes yet, right? You know, it's uh, but it could be either extreme joy, uh, but extremes are hard to handle, and that's where there was the challenge. Imagine if the Mar- if Amisha wouldn't have bought the story of the Miraglin. Let's say they would have refused to believe it. It's fake news, right? right. Fake news, right? They, they work for CNN, right? <laughs> right? That should have given it away, right? 
Right? So they, right? they would have refused to believe the story. Right? So Am Yisrael would have gone into Eretz Yisrael on Tisha B'Av. So this is what I heard from my Rebbe, Moshe Shapiro, Zecher Tzadik, the Kodesh of Bracha. An amazing thing in, in Hebrew. When you double the last letter, it, mean, it, it is to mean smallness. Like katan is small. Katan tan is very small. That's why we call, he explained us in the same shir, we call idols elilim. We're making fun of them, like little god. <laughs> right there? Uh, getchka, right? Little god, right? We're making fun of them, right? Yeah, you call yourself god, you're little, right? Elil, right? Double the last letter. Okay. Nisan, which is chodesh ha is chodesh ha-aviv. What does that mean? Little av. If we, if, if we would have not fallen for the story of the Miraglin, right, then we, Av, you know, Nisan would be small by comparison. Aviv, little Av, Chodesh Av, in which like it'll be in the future. Extreme goodness, extreme goodness, right? You know, we, we just have to, we weren't ready. We didn't have the vessels to hold, you know, the extreme goodness. Well, you don't have vessels to hold, you know, if, if you can't harness it, it works against you, like any energy. If you can't harness it, then it's destructive. If you can harness it, it's good. If you can't harness it, it, it you know, it's just, you know, like water, you can harness it, fine. If not, it floods you. Electricity, you can harness it, it powers your machines. If not, it electrocutes you. Right? It's, uh, and, and, and that's, you know, that's the challenge. Like, th these points here are the extremes. And we don't have yet the vessels to handle it. Meaning we, we were challenged, like, you know, if you would have been Omer bin Yisrael, we would have developed those vessels. We failed. Now, we can't hold those extremes. But the point I want to make is that we have to understand that this time stream, these three weeks, is in time what Chorben Abayas is spatially. So, like, this spatial damage that, you know, the base of Midrash is Nebuch destroyed, right, it, it, you know, that's perpetually in Har Abayas, that there's, you know, a mosque there, and Rav Chorben Abayas, Shu Alim Hilchobo, Right? You know, but the, 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 the parallel in time, right, to the, what the Chorban is in Mokom is these three weeks. And that's why they are three weeks. They are three weeks parallel to the Chorban, right, which, uh, which, was, uh, which really is the destruction of our tripod that was built up, you know, be a sowed at the foundational level by Avram Yitzhak and Yaakov and made us the Jewish people. So the three weeks is in time what the Chorban is in Makom, and that's why by no coincidence it's three weeks long, and it's 21 days, undoing the 21 years of the power that these three guys had that was undone by the Biryonim, who burnt down the storage houses and forced us to go to war with the Romans. So you have to understand that what, what the three weeks are in, in Zman is parallel to what the Chorban is in Makom. And during this time, we are actually facing the gash that there is in the cosmic fabric. Right, that we have to be real with the idea right, that, uh, that Chorben Habayas, a world without a base of Midras, is not a normal world. God meant there. Nisav HaKoshkel Dira B'Tachtorim HaKosh Baruch Hu, just like Bereshis, Bishul HaTor Shnikrois Reishis, Bishul Yisrael Shnikrois Reishis, the whole Genesis project was that there should be an Am Yisrael in its glory, with its Torah, with the base of Mikdash on earth, which is the final glorification. Like we say in the Dayenu. Dayenu, we count, you know, Referring again to Pesach night, talk about if God did this. And what's the highest level? That's the, that's the, that's the capstone of Am Yisrael and, and the Torah being fully realized, in all its, it, it's fully realized in all its glory when there's a base of Mikdash on earth. So we have to realize, right, that, that, you know, that the world is damaged. The world is damaged. Right? And it's, it's not spilt milk. It's damaged now. It's so like if your house burnt down, you say, don't cry over spilt milk. No, you're homeless, right? You've got to be worried until you have a new house. Right? Spilt milk is in the past and, you know, and it's gone, right? But, you know, something like being homeless, right? That's not something you call spilt milk. You know, you can't live without a house. We have to come to the recognition that the world as it is, is damaged. And that's what your Mio Navi felt he couldn't explain to Plato. Your whole concept of world order, that, you know, the philosopher saw the beauty in the world as it is, it, you know, needing a base of interest is not part of their worldview. It's not part of their physics, not part of their metaphysics. You wouldn't understand that the world is blemished. There is a gash in the cosmic fabric because of Chorban Abayas. But your whole secular worldview doesn't account for that. Is there a place for a base of Mikdash in your secular worldview? Is the base of the center of your universe in your worldview? It's not even on the map. 
I can't explain it to you because your perception of reality is totally different. Our perception of reality is that the world is incomplete and is tarnished and is damaged and is blemished. If Amisol's not at their full glory and that tripod doesn't stand proud with Amisol in Eretz Yisrael with the Torah and with the Beis HaMikdash. <laughs> and that's what the Chorba is. I'm mourning the destruction of the world. And when we reach this time stream uh, from Shivasar Batamas to Tishaba, Bein HaMitzarim, the between the two poles, right? We are in time, getting back to the aspect in time that's parallel to the damage in Makom of the base of Midrash being destroyed and not being there. We've reached its parallel in time. This, these three weeks are the, the time aspect of the gash that there is in the cosmos. These Baruch Shem, the gash is from here to there. Those are the poles. That's, you know, the damage is from here to here. And that's why the Avelis, immediately it gets worse and worse and worse until Tisha B'Av, which is the other pole, and that's the Katzeh, the other extreme. But once you get over the edge, the next day at Chatzos, the whole thing's over. Right? Because this is the gash, and we, we transverse the gash. It's a three-week-long gash, and when you get past it, we get past it, and we get on with our lives, you know, hopefully not forgetting. But we are, during the three weeks, we are coming to the time equivalent of the gash that there is in the universe, and our abode is to acknowledge that the universe is, has a gash in it. The universe is tainted, tarnished, right? uh, deficient, because there's no base of Mikdash on earth. And if we are real with that, because Mitzabah Yushalayim, Zochebra B'Simchasa, if you realize that you don't accept the world as it is, you don't accept reality as reality, the way the second world says reality, you don't accept, that's not real. Real is, you know, with the base of Mikdash and with Hashua Shashkin on earth, Oh, so you are, know what reality ought to look like, you'll see that reality. But if you accept this world without a base as being normal and acceptable, you won't see the base of Mikdash because you think you don't need it. And that's the Avoda during these days. We, are, you know, we have come to the time equivalent to the gash that there is in Mokom. You know, we are the, the aspect of time that is Keneged, right? the Chorben Abayas. Right? We are now, and during the time we have to acknowledge that this is you know, cosmic damage. The world is not right the way it is. It's not right. And if you are real with that, that the world is not right the way it is, the revulsion will give you the world that you want. If you are willing to accept this as being normal, you'll be stuck with it. And that's what it means. I'm Abel Yushalayim. Right? Then Zohar Rebbe Simchasa, because you know that this is not reality, so God will show you the reality you believe in. You accept this as reality, you'll, st- you'll be stuck with it. <coughs> and, and this is the, um, right? you know, this is the avoda of, of this uh, of this time stream, right? We've come, we re-encounter the gash in the universe. We have to acknowledge that the universe is gash, the universe is blemished, and and uh, that we acknowledge that Hakarshko will give us what we think is normal. If we you know, that a world that is normal, Hakarshko will give us that normality that we believe in, that normalcy. Right, and then this cosmic gash will become Yafak Lasasal Simcha and we'll have Kim to accept the extreme tone.